uh, today over at Sports Illustrated released his list of the 12 teams who can make the Super Bowl. And I'm like, Connor, you're frustrating me. First of all, you normally do 13, so I feel like you're shortchanging me, which I don't like. And we sit here in the second week of July. We know that this isn't true. We know it's not true. We know that more teams than 12 can win the Super Bowl. So that's his list. Chiefs, Bills, Jets, Ravens, Bengals, Browns, Texans, Niners, Rams, Lions, Packers, Eagles. Yeah, I'm with you. All of those teams could win a Super Bowl. You know, do you have to squint and think, okay, you know, Stafford was amazing. McVay's great. They need to have a lot of health. It's an old team. It's not a deep team because they haven't had a lot of draft picks recently. Sure. Jets, tough conference. Again, a lot of aging players, a lot of injury risks there. The Browns, an 11-win team with a great roster. Are they ever going to get it back to Deshaun Watson, what he looked like with Bill O'Brien when he had the 5,000-yard season in his early 20s? I'd bet against it. But, you know, sure, all of those teams could win the Super Bowl. But we see 50% turnover of the NFL playoffs every year. There's a worst-to-first team every year in the NFL playoffs. And if you make it, you can win the Super Bowl. We've seen that before. You could be a wild card team and be in the Super Bowl. You could be a wild card team and win the Super Bowl. You could be a nine-win team in the regular season and win a Super Bowl. We've seen all of these things before. It's a single elimination tournament, which lends itself to a high degree of variance. And so, like, let's just go through a few teams that were not on that list. The Dallas Cowboys. Do I like their offseason? No. They say they're all in, and they haven't added anybody. And they lost a couple of offensive linemen. They lose Tony Pollard. They bring in Zeke Elliott. I don't don't like the Cowboys offseason. I'm not here defending it. I think it's weird what they're doing with the contracts. They've got a lame duck head coach in Mike McCarthy. They haven't paid Micah. They haven't paid CeeDee. They haven't paid Dak. That's going to lend itself to distractions and all that. Okay. Not saying I'm not standing here saying great offseason, Dallas, but they led the league in scoring last year. (laughs) They won 12 games. They've won 12 games three years in a row. You're telling me there's no version of events where the Dallas Cowboys say, okay, contracts, whatever. We're going to use it to us against the world, us against the front office, and go out there and have another great season and exercise some of those demons in the postseason? That's impossible. It's impossible that Dallas, with their pass rush and their takeaway specialists and their high-powered passing offense, it's impossible that they win the Super Bowl? No, of course not. The Atlanta Falcons, it's impossible that a team that brings back the entirety of its offensive line, upgraded at head coach, upgraded at play caller, upgraded at quarterback, upgraded at wide receiver two and three, and is going to, oh, I don't know, give the ball to B. John Robinson and Kyle Pitts and Drake London a little bit more, force feed their star players, their first round picks of, you know, the last three years before Michael Penix was picked this year. It's, It's impossible that that team could win a division, host a playoff game, and win a Super Bowl? No. I'm from Chicago. The Bears finish strong, could have a top 15 defense and a top 15 offense, a well-rounded young roster with, and this is the key point, that dude you're seeing right there, number 18, Caleb Williams. What if he's awesome? What if he's C.J. Stroud this year? What if he's Justin Herbert this year? You take a seven-win team last year, and inject, what was Stroud last year? Top 10 quarterback in the NFL? Obviously. Top five, debatably. Like, you throw a top 10 quarterback onto that Bears team, they can win the Super Bowl. That's before you even mention Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift, Roma Dunze, all of their additions. So there's also history that we can take into account here. If you say it's only 12 teams that can win the Super Bowl, You're saying that roughly the teams that are in the 20 to one and better range are the teams that can win. And while that is obviously normally the case, there are exceptions to that rule. And it's not so ridiculous that I'm only arguing exceptions. The 2001 Patriots were 60 to one. The 2017 Eagles were 60 to one. If you, broadened out Connor's list and said, all right, teams right now that are 60 to one or better to win the Super Bowl, they have a shot. 
That includes teams like the Jaguars, the Steelers, the Colts. You're telling me there's no Jaguars fan out there that thinks that this is the year that Trevor Lawrence puts it all together and they go on a run? There's no Colts fan that believes Anthony Richardson, he can be their version of Lamar Jackson. They liked what they saw from Shane Steichen. Steelers fans, obviously, they always think they can win the Super Bowl. They've never had a losing record. And then I can give you the extreme example. Kurt Warner, they were 150 to 1, the 99 Rams. That would include every team in the NFL other than the Patriots, Panthers, and Broncos. The NFL is a league of parity. It's a league of everyone believing they got a shot. It's a league of worst to first. There's more than 12 teams that can win the Super Bowl. Obviously, the Chiefs, the Niners, the Lions, those are the, the safe bets. Those are the best teams. The Ravens, of course, no one's denying that. They are the most likely outcome. But there's so much injury variance and one-game single elimination variance that it's way more than 12 teams that can win the Super Bowl. That's one of the bedrock principles of why the NFL is the most popular sport in this country by far because on opening day, damn near every fan base in the NFL is like, we can go to the playoffs. And if we go to the playoffs and we get hot, we can win. So it's more than 12 teams. We'll talk to Connor Orr about it in just a little bit. But first, Ashley Brewer with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. Tua in Miami, the terrific columnist for the Miami Herald. He's covered the Dolphins for decades. Greg Cody says that Tua is being disrespected, and it's insulting that the Miami Dolphins do not have a contract done with Tua Tonga Viola. And I get it. He has absolutely done more on the field than Trevor Lawrence has statistically. And Trevor beat him to the bag. He got paid first. But two is an interesting case, and we can get into the specifics, and we'll talk about other guys. But the macro point here, the one that matters the most to me anyway, is they all get paid. They all get paid. Because it's a have and a have not league. It is very binary when it comes to quarterbacks in the NFL. You either have a guy that you believe you can win with, you want it to be a guy that you can win because of, and that's certainly a smaller list, but if you have a guy that you think you can win with, and clearly the Dolphins, playoff team last year, Tua led the league in passing, they can win with Tua. You don't really have an alternative. There are more teams than franchise quarterbacks in the NFL. So, Tua, he's undersized. He has an injury history, but he played every game last year. Is that something that I can guarantee you is going to be the case for the next five years? Of course not. Would I love it if my team gave Tua $250 plus million? No. But the alternative to paying Tua is Skylar Thompson. That's the reality of the situation. Like You either have a guy that's good enough to pay, and you pay him, or you don't pay him, and three or four other teams will line up to pay him. The Falcons had Taylor Heineke and Desmond Ritter. They fell all over themselves. They tampered in order to pay Kirk Cousins, 35 years old, $100 million guaranteed, coming off a ruptured Achilles. So Tua, it's two weeks until the start of Dolphins training camp today. He'll get paid. Maybe, just maybe, he'll have to go into the fifth year and there will be a franchise tag in the future. Maybe. My guess is he gets that contract extension done to avoid the distraction before training camp starts in a couple of weeks or at the latest before the regular season begins. But it's not disrespectful or insulting to take your time on these things when they all ultimately end up getting done. And the numbers are so drastic in Miami with Tua and without Tua that they can't afford to take the risk that Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell and Mike McDaniel are good enough where any quarterback could go in because we've seen it. When it was Teddy Bridgewater or Skylar Thompson, that passer rating fell from over 100 to under 60. The winning record, the 19 and 12, the playoff appearance, it goes to one and four. There are, for my money, two coaches in the NFL where you could make an argument and you could say, Whoever our quarterback is, this coach will get the absolute most out of them. Obviously, it's Andy Reid in Kansas City. Now, they don't have to worry about that because they've got Patrick Mahomes. But you go through Andy Reid's history, Jeff Garcia, Mike Vick, Kevin Cobb, Alex Smith, Donovan McNabb, the best seasons of their career 
all came with Andy Reid. So it's obviously you're happy to pay Patrick Mahomes. You're happy to pay the most talented quarterback in the history of the position. But in Kansas City, at some point, if Carson Wentz had to play, they could reasonably say, whatever the best version of this Carson Wentz is, we know that Andy Reid is going to get that out of him. So that changes the calculus a little bit as long as they have Andy Reid. And then the other one is San Francisco and Kyle Shanahan. Because paying Purdy is a tricky one. He's got Trent Williams, and he's got Debo, and he's got McCaffrey, and he's got Kittle, and for now he has Ayuk. But he also has a coach in Kyle Shanahan that got Matt Ryan an MVP as a coordinator, that got Jimmy Garoppolo to a Super Bowl, that got Brock Purdy into the MVP conversation and winning playoff games and him into a Super Bowl. So if he can get literally the last pick in the draft into a Super Bowl and into the MVP conversation in San Francisco next year when they have to pay Purdy, they'll have frank discussions. It'll be the owner, the GM, the coach in a room, and they'll be like, all right, Kyle, can you do this with anyone? Be honest with us because you didn't think you could do it with anyone after Jimmy G traded three first-round picks to go up and take a kid who played FCS ball in Trey Lance. But then you did it with the fallback plan of Brock Purdy. Do we need to pay this guy $55 million a year? Or can you do it with next year's Mr. Irrelevant or a first-round pick or a third-round pick or whomever? San Francisco's got an argument not to pay their guy 20% of the salary cap, 15% of the salary cap. 